Hi, it's Friday, August 15th. We're going to be talking about Hurricane Aaron east of the Caribbean, but first I'll briefly mention Invest 98L, a surface trough in the western gulf that quickly moved northwestward yesterday and overnight last night, now imminently moving inland and has not developed a closed circulation of any kind, so this is not a threat for tropical development, but some heavy showers and localized heavy rain may move into the southern counties of southeast Texas and along the Rio Grande Valley and northern Mexico, so be aware of that for the remainder of today. Moving on to Aaron, you can see that the storm is continuing to develop. It's been a couple of days since my last video update. I've been posting more frequently on social media, uh, but during our last video, this was a minimal tropical storm, and it has gradually intensified at a relatively slow pace over the past two to three days, just now becoming a hurricane this morning due to Hurricane Hunter data. If we take a zoomed in view of the storm, we'll see a very tightly coiled appearance in satellite imagery. You'll see a well-defined center of circulation right about in here. There has been some vertical shear that has been disrupting the structure of Aaron over the last couple of days, and that shear has been shifting direction. Yesterday, it was mostly out of the east or northeasterly direction. Today, it's switching to be a little bit more out of the northwest, so we are seeing some erosion of the convection on the western side of the circulation, but it does appear that the center of Aaron is tucked almost underneath of this little dimple in the thunderstorm tops on this visible loop. So you'll see a ring of deep thunderstorms surrounding this dimple. This could be the beginnings of a formative eye wall as Aaron now becomes a hurricane and is clearly moving northwestward. If we take a step back out in the zoom, you'll see that it is moving north of due west and it's already at the latitude of the northernmost leeward Antilles Islands, and so this is going to avoid hitting these islands directly, but a grazing blow from the southern rain bands is possible as Aaron scoots by to the north. Here's the Hurricane Hunter data from just a couple of hours ago, showing Aaron moving again on that west-northwest track along these orange dots where the aircraft fixed the center. You can see that the central pressure value has been declining during the flight, indicating intensification of the storm. The strongest winds are being found in the northeastern quadrant or northeastern eyewall of that developing ring of convection, and this is where the aircraft measured winds strong enough to suggest that the maximum winds in Aaron have increased to over 70 to 75 miles per hour, making this a Category 1 hurricane. And you'll notice that as this is a storm scooting off rather briskly to the west-northwest, uh, this is causing the winds on this side to be significantly stronger than the winds on the southern side of the circulation. This is good news for the Leeward Islands, of course, as they will be on this half where winds are generally weaker, uh, but that doesn't mean tropical storm force gusts can't occur occasionally in some of the rain bands. Given that Aaron is now forming an inner core and perhaps an eye wall, we're likely to see intensification continue. It's really just a question of how rapidly. This is the high resolution half B model from NOAA. You'll see Aaron here at the initial time, and this is a model that's uh, pretty aggressive, gets this going rather quickly. And by the time Aaron is north of Puerto Rico, sometime on Sunday morning or afternoon, this is already category three or four hurricane on the model. So this is one of the, the more aggressive models at this point. There are others that are less aggressive. For example, the European model, this is the upper level wind flow on Sunday morning, and it depicts Aaron struggling a little bit more right here with some wind shear associated with an upper level ridge that is offset from the storm to its west. And this is bringing uh, northerly wind, sorry, I drew the arrow wrong there, northerly wind down on the vortex on the eastern side of this ridge causing some northerly shear of at least 30 knots, and the European has been rather consistent on this, while other models are a little bit weaker with this offset ridge and have less shear, allowing Aaron to intensify more quickly. So there's a range of outcomes here. Aaron could uh, still be a little bit disrupted as it's moving north of Puerto Rico, but even on the European model, uh, eventually the storm moves northwest and uh, this ridge declines in strength, and we end up in an environment where the shear is much lower by the time Aaron gets out in here in the Bermuda Triangle region, and this is when peak intensity is likely to occur over some of the warmest sea surface temperatures in the Atlantic right now, along with low shear, likely making Aaron a major hurricane of some type, category three or four most likely, at peak intensity in the southwestern Atlantic in several days. Now, speaking of the track here, this is the European Ensemble Mean showing the 500 millibar chart. This is roughly the steering level that will guide the storm. This is on Sunday morning, so this is when Aaron is due north of Puerto Rico right down here. 
And this is similar to what we talked about earlier this week. In my previous video, we talked about the main steering features being this uh, deep layer ridge over the central United States and this subtropical ridge over the Atlantic. And the key feature here is that there is a, a big break between the two. There's a weakness in this ridge that develops. This is thanks to a couple of shortwave troughs in the jet stream right here, and then ultimately this big longwave trough coming into southeastern Canada. This really facilitates a weakness in the steering ridge that guides the storm towards the northwest. And in my last video, we talked about how if Aaron is, is really in this spot sufficiently far north to the north of the eastern Caribbean, it would likely take this exit through this weakness and turn northward to the east of North America and eventually northeastward out into the open Atlantic, with the only question being how close to Bermuda does it track. And we really haven't moved off of that narrative over the last few days. And now that we're closer to the event and uh, we're now talking about a medium range forecast, not really a long range forecast, uh, we're increasing confidence that this is going to be the case. Uh, we're not seeing any indications that the storm is going to be anomalously far to the south. You saw that today. It's already at the latitude of the northernmost leeward islands out here. So it is likely going to be in this spot on Sunday. And from there, there is going to be some uncertainty as to exactly how close to Bermuda or how close to the Bahamas it tracks during this turn, uh, but it is turning. And this could very well be one of the best case scenarios where uh, Aaron ends up splitting the difference between all the different land masses that it could theoretically threaten. It will mostly avoid the northeastern Caribbean, likely avoid the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos. And if it passes west of Bermuda but east of Cape Hatteras, it'll do something that we like to call splitting the uprights between uh, Bermuda and Cape Hatteras and going right down the middle which is really a best case scenario. This is likely to be a major hurricane, rather powerful, uh, but could largely avoid all of the significant population centers in the Western Atlantic. And of course, nothing is uh, certain in five to six days, and we could still see shifts in the forecast, but this overall pattern, the steering pattern has been relatively consistent in the modeling over the last few days, and models have come into better agreement over time on this outcome. You can see some of the tracking tracking models that the National Hurricane Center likes to use on this map here. Here's Aaron. You can see that west northwestward track again. Some comfortable margins for the uh, northern leewards, although tropical storm watches are out for some of these northernmost islands due to the possible grazing blow. And again, some comfortable margins here with the Turks and Caicos and the southeastern Bahamas. And then once again, some margins with Bermuda and some margins with Cape Hatteras. So this would be effectively a Goldilocks track if this turns out this way. Again, some shifts to the left or the right in this portion of the track may yet occur. So you can't really let your guard down entirely, especially if you're in Bermuda and the southeastern Bahamas, just in case there are some subtle shifts that bring the wind field, the outer wind field closer to these areas. But so far, things are, are looking optimistic. Uh, for avoiding a direct strike of Aaron's inner core on any populated areas, which is great to see. This is the official track forecast from the National Hurricane Center. Again, tropical storm watches are out in yellow for the northern leeward islands, including Anguilla, Barbuda, and St. Martin here. And there is a, a chance of a grazing blow from the wind field. You can see the storm moving to the north, becoming a major hurricane in the forecast by late Saturday. That would be category three or stronger, winds of 115 miles per hour or stronger, and then remaining a major hurricane as it moves northwestward and eventually towards the north on that journey to the east of the Bahamas, west of Bermuda, and east of North America. And hopefully this track holds in this spot would be good news for everyone. This is the wind probability swath for tropical storm force winds, 40 miles per hour or stronger. You can see there is still a chance of a grazing blow of this wind field. Probabilities are about 20% or less for the northernmost islands of the northeastern Caribbean. But keep in mind that spiral bands on the southern side, that would be these that you can see in satellite imagery. That's there in center, but you can see the bands extend well to the south. These are going to graze the islands, so expect some heavy rains and gusty winds that could be tropical storm force at times. Keep an eye on guidance from your local weather office for details on that. There is a chance for some rainfall uh, up to several inches in spots, isolated amounts up to six inches based on the Weather Prediction Center, uh, NOAA's forecast for this region.
And then finally, as the storm uh, moves across the Western Atlantic, it's likely to grow in size and become rather strong. Major hurricane is expected, and this is going to gin up a lot of waves, and these are going to radiate outward from the storm. So the waves and swells spreading across the Western Atlantic is going to cover a large area. So even if the wind field uh, doesn't directly affect these areas, there is going to be high surf and rip current risk all across the Western Atlantic region. So you'll see much of the Bahamas, the Eastern seaboard, all getting the potential for this along with Bermuda over the next few days. So definitely be aware of that if you're a beach goer over the course of this weekend and next week. That's about it for this video. We'll continue to track Aaron as the storm moves into the southwestern Atlantic over the next several days. Uh, keep an eye on the forecast in case there are any shifts that may increase risks to your area, but so far the overall forecast is looking fairly optimistic for the region. We'll continue to watch uh, later on behind Aaron as well other tropical waves that may eventually start to develop as we enter the peak months of the hurricane season here. The next two months are climatologically when we see the most activity, and so there will likely be more storms to track in the coming weeks. Make sure you have a hurricane plan ready to activate just in case a storm happens to come your way during this season. You can follow me on social media at Tropical Tidbits on most platforms where I will post more frequently about Aaron uh, between videos. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.